Okay, so hello everyone to the first episode of the PVSYS tutorial. Uh, so in this episode, I'll be explaining the grid connected system. Uh, maybe I'll be I'll split it into two parts. So the length of each tutorial is less, and it's better to understand. Okay, uh, so I'll be starting with the grid connected system. So first of all, we have to hit new and name our project. Uh, so first of all, I just uh, forget to mention that the grid connect system is a system that is directly connected to the grid, which means it's directly connected to the electricity providing uh, company uh, that provides electricity to your country. For example, here in the UAE, it's DIWA or SIWA. Okay, so to start with, we have to press new, name our project, for example, tutorial, and we have to start selecting a geographical site as it uh, shows here so we press this button here and now it shows Geneva uh, in Switzerland so we have to choose any location that our system is based on for example Saudi Arabia United Arab Emirates uh, Syria Iraq Jordan Libya uh, it's okay to choose any country you want uh, for example I'll be choosing the UAE uh, I'll be choosing the system based um, in Sharjah so for example university city i'll be choosing it to be somewhere here because here it's a desert area so maybe it would be a good option to add solar panels here to power up the whole university city that uh, i live in it's just a scenario that i'm making so everything will be everything will be based on it okay so after selecting the point by left clicking here i have to accept the selected point then I have to press get from coordinate button to make sure that all the data uh, is uh, grabbed then I have to import the meteor data file I have to select one of these but it's okay to choose the, uh, the default one and I have to press ok to save it and saved save it again and now we have to save our project for example I'll name it as tutorial and now our system or our site has been selected and everything is done and we have to start making the system parameters okay now to start with i have to select the orientation uh, for the orientation i have three options yearly summer and winter okay so the main difference here if i want to uh, have a system that changes changes the tilt and azimuth uh, based on the season so maybe uh, so i can choose summer and select the best tilt angle the best azimuth for it and select winter and change and select the best tilt angle and azimuth for it so i can have better uh, power up to uh, power output from my system but in my case i'll be choosing the yearly radiation yield so i won't be changing the solar panels uh, tilt angle and here i can choose if the orientation of the plane is fixed one axis tracking or dual axis tracking but most systems are fixed so it's only fixed tilt plane uh, then i have to choose the yearly radiation yield and i have to select the best angle that gives me the lowest losses and the highest amount of global power so uh, for my case i think it's 25 degrees yeah so 25 degrees tilt angle gives me 2107 kilowatt hour per meter squared uh, and the losses is zero percent it's really important to keep an eye on the losses uh, because we know the efficiency of the solar panels for commercial ones 20 percent 22 uh, that's it so we need to keep an eye on the losses to make it as low as possible so we can get as maximum power as possible yeah and if you want to simulate the system for the worst case scenario as most engineers know this term so you have to select just, uh, just winter to uh, because winter we don't have a lot of sun radiation uh, that's why you maybe want to uh, just check how much the lowest amount of power output you can get from your system you can just select winter if you want the maximum you go for summer if you want for the yearly to get real data you have to select the yearly radiation yield and press ok after that you have to select the system that you want so here we have uh, to name the system but it's okay to just give it as pvra and if you want uh, sizing 
to have a planned power or a certain area in meter squared that's okay to put any numbers you want but uh, as i'm making a hypothetical system i won't have a limitation the area or planned power i'm just making uh, a hypothetical system so I have to select the solar panel provider. Uh, it really depends on what providers you have in your country. I think most of them are available here, but uh, if they are not, you can choose similar ones to the one that uh, you have. So I'll be choosing um, TSMC solar, for example, it's just random. And I have to choose uh, the solar panel from here. So I'll be choosing different one actually. Uh, maybe sunlink pv yeah okay uh, so here as we can see uh, it's the polycrystalline solar cells i have i want to choose another one sunny coal they have polycrystalline and monocrystalline uh, solar panels uh, it really uh, there are some differences based on the price uh, the efficiency the lifetime etc so you have to get the ones that the it best suits your system okay uh, after that, I'll be choosing the solar panel that I want. The higher the power, the cost, the more costly it is. That's how it is actually. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be choosing 300 watts, and there are two options: polycrystalline with 31 volts and monocrystalline with 26 volts. So maybe I will go with the monocrystalline 26 volts. Yeah, uh, here are some optimizers for the solar panels, but I won't be going through them because uh, uh, they are not used actually, uh, they are not very used in the market, so I won't be explaining them. Okay, uh, now we have to select the inverter that we want uh, for our system. Uh, so, for example, I'll be choosing the inverter from Huawei Technology and I'll be choosing a system, for example for 4.6 kilowatts the inverter rated power and here are uh, use multi mppt feature uh, just select it because it's better to use it uh, because here it's a uh, maximum power point tracking feature so you want the system to get the most out, out of it okay so now we have to select the number of uh, the number of solar panels in series and in strings uh, so in series and the parallel sorry so and you can select this one it will choose the best for your system but sometimes or most of the time it's not very accurate because it depends on the inverter size the voltage on and on many parameters so you have to change it manually so as we can see here the overload loss is 0.8 percent which is considered as high and the pnom ratio is 1.57 so uh, here there are some losses that we have to minimize and uh, to minimize them we have to decrease the amounts of uh, the amount of solar panels we have in series so for example here we have uh, zero percent overload losses that means our system is fine but here actually uh, shows us an error uh, i'll be fixing this one uh, right now so uh, the system here has number of modules 10 16 meter squared area number of inverters it's 0 0.5 because yeah because i'm using uh, this one which chooses automatically uh, the number of solar panels that i want but uh, if i want to remove it just uh, I can remove uh, the MPPT feature so it will be automatically one because I, I can't have 0 0.5 inverters because my system is relatively small okay so as we can see here another error appeared uh, that uh, the inverter power is slightly oversized so we have to increase the amount of solar panels that we have but now another error is shown that the array VOC at negative 10 is greater than the inverter absolute maximum input voltage that means we have a problem with the voltage uh, that's when we need to start making on parallel and decrease on series I'm having two solar panels in uh, uh, two modules uh, by 11 11 in series two in uh, parallel one inverter as we can see here and if I press ok no error is shown, uh, is shown okay uh, but if you want to use the MPPT feature 
as we can see by changing the number of strings to two uh, I've solved the voltage problem uh, and everything is now working fine the number of inverters is one and I press ok there are no errors shown so it's really important to keep an eye on the global system summary information here and any error that's shown here okay so uh, here are the single line diagram if you want to see it and system overview um, I have to press ok and now I have to go uh, to the other data that I have uh, for example storage storage because um, it's relatively easy uh, if you want to have a self-consumption peak shaving weak grid uh, islanding it's it really depends on what system you are doing on one uh, and what data uh, you need so for example uh, here if I select the self-consumption I have number of battery uh, providers the type of battery the number in series and in parallel this is if you want to do a on grid system with a battery to reduce to reduce the costs as much as possible because sometimes selling to the grid selling power to the grid might not give you a lot of economical benefits as uh, storing the power that i'm getting from the solar panels in batteries okay so i'll be finishing here with uh, no storage and i'll be finishing this episode here and um, in the next episode i'll be going through the detailed losses uh, the self-consumption and the other uh, things that we have here i hope you understood uh, how to design your system and how the orientation works i know like uh, the part here of the inverters and the errors that were shown is not very clear but it will be more clear in the real practical solutions that i'll be explaining in the end of uh, this series so uh, i hope you stay tuned for the end of this series and have a great day